really tough. Um, and that's something that's tough for me is telling people how I'm going. Um, but yeah, it's been really difficult and I've sort of lost my identity as a footballer a little bit, but also as a person too, which has been hard. Just the little things um, that probably I took for granted before I can't do, whether that's like going to the supermarket or going to a cafe with my girlfriend or you know driving a car or anything like that. I've said before I'm not great at telling people that I'm struggling and people that I respect a lot and things like that. It's hard to say that I'm really going through a tough time with my head. Very concerning for me and then I think for my girlfriend, for my family. It is because, yeah, I'm sort of just a shell of a person that I was, really. Like, I'm sort of just completely different. That was one of the more heartbreaking conversations I can remember hearing in football for a long, long time. Doug, I know you spent a long time with him yesterday on radio. Uh, pretty emotional stuff, wasn't it? Oh, no question. Uh, one of the saddest things I've been a part of. He, he, he said he's, he's broken. And all that he wants to do, he, he just wants to have clear sky, he wants blue sky ahead and not able to have that at the moment. Uh, headaches, um, all sorts of symptoms, light, noise, uh, still affecting him. So, you know, he, he did say that it is one of those things um, that he could wake up tomorrow and be OK yeah. and feel OK. Let's hope it happens sooner rather than later because it's been... It's been six weeks now yeah. um, where he's been having, you know, these symptoms and it, 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 was, it was so sad to us. Yeah. And when we couldn't concentrate then for the rest of the game, you just, you just thought about him and, and continue to think about him. I just hope he gets better. It's a massive problem for our game. You know, I, I know of 100 players like that, past players who've registered for this concussion court case, Tim, yeah. who have got similar symptoms. And right. we all love footy, but when you see Nate Fife get off from what he did two weeks ago, that's what makes me angry that he's able to do that act he doesn't get suspended and then we come here and we watch what happened to Paddy McCartan they've got to be tougher on those 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 even attempted hits to the head and uh, you know there's guys like Sean Smith and John Barnes John Platten Greg Williams who've spoken about their issues in life and uh, it's a real major problem I don't know really what the solution yeah. is I think if you go back game. and you analyze every incident that Paddy McCartan was involved in None of them would probably be like you're describing with Nat Fife. And I understand, we, I understand what you're saying, Mick, but... No, but it's the principle. Yeah, no, I, I understand that. But most of his have been as a result of collisions, you know, like legitimate collisions yeah. in a game, him backing back in All the All accidental stuff. Yeah, copying a clip or, or whatever. And yep. Darcy and I were talking about before we came on the program about... It's highlighted today, but how many blokes did we play with yeah. during the period of time... And you too, Duck, during that period of time that were affected by symptoms that nobody even knew about mm. because it wasn't really something that people wanted yeah. to talk about at the time. The yeah. issue... I was going to say, there's even players now, now in the media who've, who've got these issues. They don't want to talk about it because they're embarrassed about it. So, you know, it... One thing I will say about Paddy, and to, the, to have the courage to... And he hasn't been to many games because he can't come, you know, mm. to games of footy because of the noise and other things. But to have the courage to sit there and be so honest mm. and say, you mm. know, say the things that he said to us, it was as raw as you'll ever get. 